And yes, he does. He moves across. He's acknowledged that that leaves Marcus Ambrose in the lead. No doubt about it, you're witnessing a crucial point in the championship picture. This puts Mark Scaife out of business effectively for this race. And also in Keep his... Keep ahead, mate. I know it's not much fun, but we're going to have to press on and do the best we can. And his title defence. So while Mark Scaife trundles through at 40 k's an hour, Marcus Ambrose takes over the race lead. Todd Kelly is second. Jason Bright is third. That's a long, hard road and a very bitter pill to sw swallow for Mark Scaife. Somebody else has gone playing in the dirt around at turn two. Pit window is now open. One compulsion section, but there's a lot of time to be made up through there too. Between Tander and Johnson. Shades of Sandown when these two got together there only a couple of months ago, so they'll no doubt have something to say to each other after this. They had such a friendly chat with each other after that at Sandown, so you can imagine what this one's going to be like. Your PlayStation 2 race score shows it. Marcus Ambrose in front, Todd Kelly second, then Bright Wilson, Stephen Richards and Lowndes, Seaton is seventh, Bernard eighth. Greg Murphy has moved up to ninth from 14th. Ambrose showing really good pace relative to Kelly, Bright, Wilson and so on. And this time through records a 34-1 fastest lap so far. Next closest is Todd Kelly. 34-9. Got one mission here. 134-17 for Marcus Ambrose. But more importantly, you look up on the leaderboard. He's also got 96 championship points next to his name if he can hold this position so many variables in the equation that they drive you nuts trying to work it out. Marcus Ambrose made it very simple. If I win, they don't. That's his focus this weekend right now. Well, it's just fallen straight into his lap. Here's the damage done to uh, Paul Dumbrell's car. All right. Simon Wills also has come in to the eastern end of the pit lane, so they'll take a look at that car. It's got a little bit more substantial damage around the front of it, as you can see. This is their new car. Car number 34, Garth Tander is also going to take a drive through here. So we don't block 45. Sorry, you hop out. So that's being bin for now. What about Mark Scaife? Call through pit lane. Pinching the start. And uh, I hate to think what he's saying to himself right now. Maybe Jeff Breck can explain what they're feeling in HRT. Jeff, has there been any word back from Mark about that jump start? Or is it just the way the start is here downhill? He's rolled initially. Do you know what's happened? Yeah, well, um, you know, there's been no initial chat with Mark. I mean, the, the, uh, the stewards obviously saw it roll, uh, if it did, and they've made an appropriate uh, penalty for it. So it's about all you can really say. You just have to press on. Disappointing for the championship, though. Oh, it is. It's just well, probably disappointing for the guys for the day. You know, we put in a big effort and, uh, you know, to, to sort of to do it on a silly thing like that is a bit disappointing. But you know, we just press on. We'll be right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. As I said before, we went back down to the pit lane. Tander is also going to cop a drive-through for giving Stephen Johnson a nudge down there at turn two. So I don't think he's actually taken that at this stage, but he'll take it shortly. This is Ingle down in tenth at the moment. Brad Jones comes in to try and take himself out of the queue early. The car's had no pace at all all weekend. Started right up the back of the field. There's Tander. And he has just executed his drive-through. That's turn two. So he'll also be uh, back down the order in Mark Scaife land. He's taking a look at uh, the lower half of the top ten. In ninth position is Murph. Ingle is in tenth. So Greg Murphy came up from 14th to 9th. Russell Ingle started 18th on the grid. So he's made up a good solid eight positions. And I guess he's got some sort of brief to keep his eyes on Greg Murphy. He's right in position to do that. Marcus Ambrose has a good solid lead over Todd Kelly. A 4.6 second lead in fact. Who would have thought he had the run?
race leads so quickly. Right now, he's got one hand firmly wrapped around the championship for 2003. He's got a whole weekend to put the other hand on it. We're back at Eastern Creek where Marcus Ambrose has inherited a five plus seconds lead over his championship rival's teammate, Todd Kelly. A few teams have made early pit stops here. Some, of course, were not intentional. We're referring to Mark Skate's drive through. I, uh, I hasten to add in a couple of early bingles, but McConville's come in early, so has Dumbrell and Stephen Richards. So Castrol Perkins racing, running to an early pit stop strategy there. Wheel came in early as well, so did Jones and Bowers. So Aussie Mail racing thinking along the same lines. Funny thing, Billy, we've been saying all week, and there's been so much talk all week as to, you know, who would gang up on who and who would support who and who'd be backing who and all that kind of stuff. And can I get my Blue Oval teammates around me or can the General's men protect this guy or that guy? And right now, it's all gone out the window because Marcus Ambrose is just playing a lone hand. He's 5.6 seconds out. Todd Kelly's out of the championship picture. Jason Bright's out of the championship picture. So too is Wilson, Lowndes, Seaton, Bernard. You've got to go down to position eight to find Greg Murphy. So Murph's moved up to eight. Russell Ingle is ninth. And Paul Radisich is tenth. Right, he's going to get Todd here the way this is shaping up at the moment because it looks like Todd's struggling to keep the car online at the moment. If they stay as they are, then the order would be Ambrose 1989. Murphy with 19.44 and Scaife with 18.56, so he'd be broadening that gap, which was at 24, out to 45 points. But obviously, as we look here, Todd running wide, very wide on the exit of Turn 9. He couldn't pull it up. Um, they, these positions are likely to change in terms of where Greg and uh, Mark are before this is all done and dusted. But if you want to win this championship and you come into it with a points buffer as Marcus is, the best thing to do is win the race. Now, let's have another look at that replay at the start there and you see that uh, Scaife has just uh, bolted down the road. The critical thing here is whether or not his front wheels were across the white line at the point where the light came on. Cars can flinch provided you arrest them and you haven't penetrated that white line before the light turns green. The judge of fact there will allow you to allow the car to flinch if you like when you engage gear provided you stop it and the car is stationary when it takes the green light but if uh, the HRT crew pulled that car up right on the white line which I suspect they did and Mark moved at all which we think he did and here it is if he moves you can see it moving there if he gets onto that white line it's difficult to tell but I'd say that he was pretty much clean bold so if he was moving when the light came on or he was on that white line that's enough to prompt the drive through. Max Wilson is in fourth position at the moment. And he's staying in touch with Kelly, whose car's clearly going away from him. Greg Rust. Neil's a real drama's there for Paul Radisich during the uh, the course of his pit stop. They threw the new tyres on it, but the left front had real dramas. They couldn't get enough bite out of that wheel nut. They had to change wheel nuts and, uh, and send him out, but he lost a lot of time in that stop. Shell Helix race update. Ambrose Bright, Todd Kelly, Wilson, Lowndes. That's your top five. David Bernard there in seventh. You can see Murph has now moved up to sixth. Some news on David Bernard today out of Ford Performance Racing. He won't be at FPR next year. They're going to run a two-car operation, not three. Lounge and Seaton will be there, but David Bernard will be looking for another gig. Lowndes always races well at Eastern Creek and he's fifth at the moment. His last lap was a 35.8. His best lap was a 35.3. So he's got reasonable consistency in this car at the moment. And uh, if you recall back in May for round three of the championship here, he finished on the podium that weekend with Marcus Ambrose, the Ford 1-2-3. And so I expect we'll probably see a pretty strong result from him again this weekend, Grant. Simon Wilson, fairly substantial damage to the front of your car there. What happened? Um, just one of those typical bottleneck things. We went into the hairpin. Uh, we're all in the line up the inside. And unfortunately, I think it was uh, Wheelie in behind me just uh, locked up and pushed me into everyone else in front of it. In front of me, um, maybe saw the little fella giving him the bird on the back of our car and saw a bit of red mist and didn't like it. What's the uh, prognosis in terms of the car? Sorry? What's the situation as far as the car's concerned? Uh, the car's had 
better days, I suppose. It's only our new car and unfortunately it's dinged, but um, it's sort of hold the radiator, there's water pouring out of the power steering's failing now, so it's better to park it and make make sure we get a few miles in under this car before next year. All right, mate, good luck, all of it. Okay, thanks. Meanwhile, Greg Murphy is now sixth, so he's dispatched a couple more people. And I understand that Ambrose is likely to take his service with car four any tick of the clock. So and in that position of sixth, there's still 81 points there for Greg Murphy as Ambrose now trickles into the lane. And here's Murph coming down the front straight. And Murphy's car in its lap speed appears to be a reasonable package at the moment. So whatever Eric has guessed that. Uh, Darrell Beatty's there for this stop. Ambrose then, everything good. These tyres actually that are going on this car, there's a roll similar as up in there. Looks like about two whole turns to the right on that car. Also these tyres they're putting on this car, this team make a big effort over the last few days to put these tyres for a few heat cycles to try and solve their problems I've had throughout the year. And you notice that Marcus had to circumnavigate that big witch's hat there in the fast lane of the pit lane. That's because those people that are down at the exit end of the lane are not permitted to exit via the slow lane because clearly that would be an advantage. Give them an advantage over those further up the lane. Paul Dumbrell here getting a tap from Jason Richards and turns it around at turn nine. So Marcus looked like it was a pretty efficient stop. Darrell noted that a rear roll centre adjustment was made. We don't know in which direction. I suspect that it might be down a little just to calm the car down now for this segment of the race. Daryl. Yeah, Daryl's down in SBR. We're just trying to get word on uh, Nerf on them being up to us. So he's... Well, Matty, I can add there for you if you want. Go ahead. Yeah, um, we've, uh, we've been down here, Rob Crawford, just having a word to... Um, to Gary Rogers' crew on the timing of Garth Tander's stop. He wanted to make sure that the pit lane was nice and clear for Murphy. Murphy is making his way into pit lane now. They've got tyres on standby for him. I can tell you that Murphy has not been on the radio to this team since the commencement of the race, and they're basically suggesting that that means he's not overly happy with the balance in this car, despite what Neil was saying before in terms of its, of its speed and its lap times. Here he comes, trundling down pit lane, 40 k's an hour, what seems like an eternity as he endeavours to hang on to second in the championship. They want to make this quick, clean and quick Kmart racing. They're well versed at these pit stops, very fast this operation. Here we go, Murphy in. New rubber on. Go, 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 go. Good stop for Murphy. Let's see where he comes out on track. Excellent stop. Not much in it between the Murphy stop and the Ambrose stop. How many positions that have affected for Greg Murphy and Marcus Ambrose? It's the big game going on at the moment. Lots of little games, lots of people want to impress, shore up deals for next season. Craig Lowndes, for instance, has his own little game going with trying to hold on to fifth spot in the championship. He's got to make sure he stays ahead of Rick Kelly, Stephen Richards and Jason Bright. Well, Bright is in front of him on the road at the moment. Got the other guys covered. So on cold tyres now, stone cold tyres. They will have laid them out in the sun. But Murphy needs to be a little careful for the first half of this lap. He's in behind, I think it was Seaton that he came out in, uh, behind him in car five. But uh, Greg made the point that he's been quiet on the radio hasn't made or asked for any calls, but he doesn't look like he's travelling along too bad. He was able to actually slice through some cars. At the moment, he's probably a bit subdued knowing that Marcus is in front. And he's been subdued all weekend when he realised when he first got here that uh, the car just wasn't in the zone. And when you arrive at a track and they don't drop straight into a line and you find the sweet spot quickly, they can be long, tough weekends. He's going to be on for a result one way or another, but whether or not he can actually get in the main game is the tricky part. Here's Bright, race leader at the moment, yet to take his stop. Those six guys on your race score yet to complete their compulsory pit stop. So Jason Bright has the lead. 
of the main event. Marcus Ambrose, on corrected order, will zip straight back to the top when they do the pit lane shuffle. Get back! Welcome back, and a moment for Greg Murphy that a championship contender does not need. A little touch-up from, dare we say it, a Ford. And on that subject, Marcus Ambrose, having made his scheduled pit stop, is further back in the pack as we see Craig Lowndes coming into the pits now for his scheduled stop. Ambrose is rapidly approaching the back of Mark Scaife's car. Of course, Scaife was back in the field after the drive-through. Uh, they are currently seventh, that's Scaife, and eighth for Ambrose. So that will be something to watch as we remind you of the V8 Supercar website. <laughs> Look at He's always down. smiling, isn't he, Craig? <laughs> he is a clown, isn't he? Now he can get back to business. <laughs> Unbelievable. This is the circuit where he started his extraordinary touring car career officially. Debuted here in 1996. And a VR Commodore. And that year, of course, was the first of his three championships. He'll finish 2003 with a few ticks in some of the boxes. They got a victory at FPR, albeit under open skies in uh, Phillip Island. And he's been on the podium, as Neil mentioned, here at Easter Creek in round three. And also at Oren Park, and don't forget Bathurst, second with Glen Seaton. Different ball game next year for FPR, two-car operation. He did something a bit unusual down there. Then he was back in second gear at turn seven. Remember, uh, he's got cold tyres, so he's trying to just hustle the car along as best he can, but most often you don't see too many people through there in second. It's generally a third gear corner. He's just chasing his teammate, David Bernard. He's the race leader. Uh, and he's been in consultation with his crew, reasonably happy with it at the moment. He's taking time out of everybody in the field at the moment. He's been uh, pretty consistent and uh, the times bleed away substantially here at this racetrack after you get away from the first couple of laps. They blow out by a good couple of seconds and uh, they're nothing like the way in which they qualify. But it's the case of the walking wounded when you look at some lap times, you see 36s and 37s, bearing in mind that 33s and 32s were the hot numbers in peak condition. Greg Rust. Well, Neil and uh, Matty, because this track is so temperature sensitive and it can really send your lap times southward during the course of the day here when the, the, the sun is shining the way that it is at the moment. A number of teams have been keeping a close eye on the track temperature. I can tell you it's gone up one degree ambient and one degree on track since the commencement of this race. So teams that have yet to pit the likes of Stephen Johnson, Dick Johnson racing on standby for him right now will have taken that into account. Way contact there, Greg Murphy and Glenn Seaton. Just caught the tail end of that one, so Murph is having to bash and barge his way through this field. He's getting no help, as you'd expect, from the Blue Oval Boys in front of him. That's Max Wilson in front of him. Yep. Russell Ingalls been behind him. I need to see it again, but uh, he may well come under the wrath of uh, race control because it looked as though he just made contact with the back or the, uh, of Glenn's car. Oh, That's Rick Kelly and Bernard. That was an interesting little one. Definitely have another look at it if we can. There you go. This is from Ingalls' view. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm imagining that they won't, won't feel as though he's anywhere near far enough alongside to... Uh, no, not at all. He's got him behind the rear wheel, so I would imagine that um, Greg's probably going to get a drive-through for that, which means that... Uh, game over. Game over. I may, may be wrong. There may, may be something else to it that we haven't seen. And there's obviously... There was a bit of spirit between this bloke and Max Wilson a couple of laps back on the approach here to Turn 2. I haven't heard boo from Greg Murphy since this race began. We know how vocal he can be. We've heard not a word from the man who's, well, the man most likely to stop Marcus Ambrose. Coming into this weekend, Mark Scaife really knew that he was right up against it to defend his series. The fascinating thing about Murphy's situation was that they just did not expect to be in this position. 
good position to be in, but they certainly didn't expect to be there. Here's an interesting little scenario. Mark Scaife just in front of Marcus Ambrose. On the road, that is. Scaife is about to take his compulsory pit stop because remember that uh, the other yeah, stop no was purely, it wasn't a stop, it was a drive-through. Jason Bright, Todd Kelly, Mark Larkham and Mark Noski. The only guys yet to complete their pit. Our uh, pit window closes on lap 27. scaffy has been drive-through penalty for Greg Murphy, so... There you go. So two key holders have both taken drive-throughs this afternoon. And that's just handing it to Marcus Ambrose and a very nice silver platter. Go, 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 go. Watch your exit line, mate. Murph has been black flagged as well, mate. Murph has been black flagged as well. Fifty two point seven seconds to go. Fifty two point seven. Rob Crawford getting the official word and uh, Eric Pender there is now going to have the and duty of informing his driver that he has to come through and effectively say goodbye to any hope of getting this championship. Rob and Eric and those guys have been around a while they they know when they would have seen the vision they would have known so it wouldn't come as a surprise Paul Taylor was the guy delivering the bad news to them there. Drive through penalty Murph, drive through penalty That was a pretty composed response. Nothing. Let's see what came out of thinking. Well, just down here with uh, Rob Crawford. Obviously, the news has been delivered to Murph, and that's a uh, that's a pretty tough blow. Yeah, I, I have only seen a limited amount of limit uh, image of it, so uh, I can't really comment too much. Thanks. I don't think he needs to say too much, does he? Because he's gutted. You can see it in his face. So Murph's got him, like you say, probably behind. The rear left. Yeah, there was a little gap there and Glenn was coming across, which is normal though, because you make a diagonal run to that apex down there. But um, at the end of the day, Merce made contact and turned another car around, disabled another competitor, so race control is really duty-bound. If he was at the B-pillar or further up, you can, uh, can sometimes get away with it, but that's uh, pretty much a textbook incident and with a textbook outcome. Unbelievable, isn't it? All the strategies that you can think about, all the numbers that you can crunch, all the scenarios that you could throw before this race began. And who would have imagined that second and third in the championship pitcher would be doing drive-through penalties. Scaife straight off the bat, Murph 20 laps in. Marcus Ambrose is just going about his business as though it's a Saturday afternoon drive at the end of it. He's uh, got one foot on the top spot on the championship ladder. Here is Jason Bright. So that makes it uh, Todd Kelly's the only man yet to pit. And um, Murph himself would know. You know, that's why there wouldn't be a response. Yeah. You, know, you, get, go, go. you get emotion out of drivers when they, they feel like it's worth arguing over or when they've been wronged. But when you know you're a shop duck, you usually just go quiet. Well, look at the difference between that and Winton. <laughs> Murph knew it was, he was being hard done by. And he, something happened at Winton. Yeah, something happened. <laughs> I've got a video of it if you want to sit down and watch it again. The most incredible incident. He was talking about it the other day in terms of what it cost him in points. But uh, at the end of the day, Rick Murphy probably now knows that his hope's gone. Changing fortunes of this. He's doing 36. He should have no problem on tyres to get him. And this sport, a ride on show here in this one race. So, this looks like it's going to be a good outcome for Jason Bright this afternoon. Meanwhile... This is the man that, as you said quite accurately a moment ago, Matthew's kind of got one hand on the task here at the moment. He's almost grabbed that cup. Still not, not done, though. One bloke is having a pretty good run today as we take a look inside the uh, probable champion's car. Mark Larkham running fifth on track, but when you cycle through the pit stops, he uh, might find his way on the podium in this yeah, race if he plays his cars right. And you know what, Woodsy, that would be a, a great 
and he's had a lot of fun this morning. He went out and blasted through that uh, top 33 shootout and qualified 11th, best qualifier of the year. Mark Larkin hanging up the full-time driving kit for 2004. Mark Winterbottom taking over, so Larko is just letting it all hang out in his final weekend of full-time racing. He will be there for Enduros next year and also some testing, but he's going to run the business. Grant Kenny. Uh, Ross, a bit of uh, mixed fortunes in terms of uh, Scaife and Murphy now. What does that do? Does it change things from your point of view? Yeah, that's um, a tough call for those blokes. Um, but I guess that's the business we're in, you know. Pre the pressure's on and um, I wouldn't want to be making those calls. It's a long way to go, I know, but I suppose it does give uh, Marcus a chance to back off a tiny bit. Is that, I mean, are you telling him that or is that the sort of decision he's likely to make himself? No, I don't think um, we can afford to back off. As soon as you back off, little, little things start creeping in and you get a few errors and stuff. So we'll just keep our head down and keep going. Good luck. Thanks for that. round victories, five pole positions for 2003. Any other day, any other championship, he probably would have well and truly had it wrapped up by this stage, but them's the rules for 2003, and he's had to come here to Sydney again, where he won earlier in the year, and like we say, had all sorts of pressure thrown at him. Having a yank to Jim Stone this morning just about this race meeting and where they're at and really just look we just want it to be over it's been a really long season the the physical work involved for the all of the crews in this pit lane particularly contenders since bathurst is almost outrageous and everyone's tired yeah 12 rounds we've already had 20 races Five states or territories, and of course New Zealand as well. It's been a long, long road, but it's looking pretty good for Marcus Ambrose. Twenty-three of twenty-nine, and Marcus Ambrose, as we go through this cycle of pit stops, will wind up leading this race. Todd Kelly is out on the track there he is and uh, they are just starting to cycle through the times now as they run past the start finish line so ambrose officially is the race leader ahead of mark noski who is the only driver not to have made a pit stop uh, jamie wincup as well they're the top three well, marcus is heading towards a very historic championship win the first man since 1997 to win it for Ford if things keep going the way they are it'll be the 17th new name on the champions list Kelly gets up the inside of Wilson and the guy that's doing a very good job in all this scrap here is Cameron McConville just exiting frame there and he's shown as sixth but remember there are several cars in the lap scoring at the moment that have yet to take the compulsory stop this is their home test track and he was quick in practice yesterday in this morning's warm-up pretty fair effort in the shootout and um, continuing to show good pace now in this race Kelly up the inside toddler another man who started his career here in 1999 and Cameron McConville of course the Lansvale racing team this is their home test circuit and he proved that in uh, the shootout that he knows it around here qualified 13th it's just a couple of spots back from his best qualifier of the year which was the first round in Adelaide 18th in the championship for Lansvale Racing it's about 10 spots up on 2002 Ingle just made position on Wilson that time When you start looking at these lap times, as I said before, they really blow out. It's very, very hard on tyres because you constantly see soaring. Look at the difference in speed there as uh, Ingle gets the benefit not only of the toe, but also I'd suggest a bit more thunder and just easily sneaks underneath Cameraman going into uh, to turn one. So that's also for position and Wilson goes with him and Lowndes wants to buy in as well. And does so. Gets the spot. 
you look at some of these times now, Matthew, we're seeing 37s, 38s in some cases. I know some of them are traffic polluted, but it's pretty slow. One of the interesting features of this racetrack is that you only use 100% throttle about 35, 34% of the time. So the rest of the time it's all dance, dance, dance the car. And the average throttle percentage for the entire lap here is only just on 50%. So it's a place that places enormous emphasis on chassis balance and handling. Rusty? Neil, I guess for Cameron McConville, the major issue the team are reporting right now is that the uh, the rear tyre, particularly that, that right rear, is starting to go away on him. He pitted very early, did his compulsory pit stop early in the window, so maybe that's coming back to bite him a little bit now compared to when the others in front of him chose to stop. Under siege a little bit. Craig Lowndes saw that and took advantage. That uh, Lowndesy car, car number six, Tried to test last Thursday down at Phillip Island and Anthony Tratt was asked along and had a uh, jam throttle cable that led to a pretty big crash in uh, Craig Lowndes' car. They pieced all that together but it robbed them of valuable time in testing the new ProDrive engine from England which is in Glenn Seaton's car for this weekend. Meanwhile, Mark Scaife is 14th at the moment. Greg Murphy is down in 24th. Round. Speculation left, right and centre. Max Wilson's in the frame of speculation for 2004. There's going to be some movement at Triple Eight Racing. Into that uh, making an announcement sometime today. Still got good pace in Craig's car. He was on the rev limiter coming down the hill, then into four. So I reckon that uh, if we keep an eye on this little battle, you'll find that uh, Lowndes will ultimately be able to sneak by somewhere. He's got some strengths in a couple of spots on the track, but then he's weaker all through this part of the, the course, through turn six, seven, eight. You can see there that Wilson's pretty slow through the middle of nine. the equation for the championship as we see it dust off the slide rulers break out the calculators i'm breaking into a sweat just thinking about it if marcus ambrose wins greg murphy stays where he is in 24th which is unlikely today marcus will have a 93 point lead he'd only need well to finish last tomorrow to wrap it up so what does all that mean it means that it's effectively good enough to be in the bag but You've seen today that in the space of one or two, or a handful of laps even, everything and anything can happen. Contenders black flagged. Drive through penalties, Mark Scaife and Greg Murphy. Marcus Ambrose, great start. Who, what, why and where of this one has been quite fascinating. Greg Murphy's got himself in some more trouble. Did he do that on his own or was he assisted? I think it's uh, all by himself. That's a turn four and you can see how dirty the road is there. You don't have to go very far offline there for you to be in no man's land and that's where Murphy's at the moment. So bad days just get worse, don't they? Fundamentally, the problem there this weekend is the car just isn't quick enough. It's almost the exact opposite to what was happening to the opposition at the last round, the last couple of rounds. Although Marcus was pretty quick on the Gold Coast and got out of jail when everybody queued up behind the pace car. But, uh, gee, struggled in New Zealand. Good battle here between Stephen Richards and Todd Kelly. Todd has a look on the inside of turn two. Richo lets him go around. So that's for position three. Todd Kelly moves up to third spot. Ambrose is our leader. Jason Bright is second. Kelly is now third. Richards is fourth. Russell Ingle is fifth. Max Wilson is sixth. Lowndes in seventh. McConville 8th, 
Rick Kelly and Paul Morris make up our top ten as Larry Perkins looks on. He'd be pretty happy with um, the drive from Rich Owen. I think the championship, Stephen got off to an excellent start early in the year, but the VYs caused them some headaches that they probably didn't anticipate. They were super quick in their VX, but he's been a factor throughout the championship and going into this round still in eighth placing. The other thing that's worth noting is just the, uh, really the extraordinary comeback, I can't think of a better word, for Mark Scaife, considering the drive through penalty is in 12th position. So he's got car speed still, and I noticed in the last... Well, they do, but they've got to do it... In ...consistently the fastest car out there, much quicker than the lead cars at the moment, so he'll be ruining that start issue. Grant? Well, guys, it's pretty warm out here, as you can probably imagine. Ambient temperature 30, uh, 30 degrees. 45 degrees is the track temperature, and just talking about uh, what it's like for the drivers, 55 to 56 degrees in the cabin. So try and imagine what it's like to function at the mental levels necessary under those sort of extreme temperatures. Yeah, the stresses, GK, are enormous. They've studied it, and, uh, well talk about extreme sports I can tell you that scientifically proven this is an extreme sport in the cockpit they're under enormous amount of stresses uh, stresses dehydration is a key key factor and uh, you can add another hundred kilometers to the task tomorrow and they're predicting a higher temperature but with the threat of thunderstorms in the latter part of the afternoon so um, that will make 250 k's around here hard work for both reasons one because you'll uh, you'll sweat to death and then secondly you you know, when it rains here, it becomes a very slippery bit of racetrack. Also, like late afternoon here when the sun starts to dip and you're coming flying down the main straight, approaching turn one at 260 k's with the sun directly in your eyes. This little battle continues between Max Wilson of Brazil and Craig Lowndes, sixth and seventh. I thought that Craig had a bit more pace than him a few laps ago, but he just hasn't really been able to get back on terms with him. And uh, those two continue to circulate, separated by only three or four car lengths. Max seems to have his measure just at the moment. He's, I said before when we last looked at them, they had strengths and weaknesses in different parts of the track. So the order at the moment is Ambrose, Bright, Kelly, Richards, Ingle, Wilson, Lowndes were on board with Craig. Cam McConville eighth, Rick Kelly ninth, and then Paul Morris is tenth, Barguana, Scaife is still twelfth, Larkin, Bauer, Radisich, Jason Richards, Canto, Brad Jones, Glenn Seaton, and Mark Noski. That's the top twenty. Pit lane is Daryl Beattie. Daryl? Danny with Darren Warwick, a man with a wealth of knowledge in motorsport in general. Derek, what do you think of the series so far? Uh, it's absolutely awesome. You know, it's fantastic. First time I've seen it, obviously, and uh, the speed the cars go and the noise and uh, the excitement from the crowd and uh, the, the rivalry between Ford and Holden is just... Uh, but it's quite special. It's quite good. It's unusual for us from England. What about next year, championship-wise? Are we going to see you down here much or are you going to sort of relay everything from the UK? I'm going to do quite a bit from the UK, but uh, I'll come down here four or five times next year. Uh, we've got a lot of good people here, a lot better than I can uh, contribute to, really. Um, we've got a good foundation, the team's a good, good team. Uh, they've got a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of experience, um, and uh, most of it will be, will be done from here, from the people in Australia. Are you going to have a driving one for curiosity's sake? I'd love to. I'm not sure I can get a, a seat big enough anymore, but uh, uh, I'd love to, uh, love to have a go. But uh, whether or not uh, they'll trust me is another thing. It's been an unfriendly day out there when it comes to Ford versus Holden, but this is Ford versus Ford. Seventh place Craig Lowndes on the back of sixth place Max Wilson. We've seen, I think, some easier passes from the same manufacturer and some not so easy passes when it comes to opposing sides. There is your race leader Marcus Ambrose. And interesting to see right there on your PlayStation 2 race score would see that uh, Mark Scaife has muscled his way into the top 10. He's now up in ninth position. What a save. Sets up an interesting Seven laps to go Marcus. Seven laps. Mark and Greg Murphy in the championship for second place. There's only a point between them at the moment. It's obviously uh, still this race to complete and tomorrow's race, so, but that uh, closes up that little battle. Don't forget, 250 k's tomorrow. The 
final event of the main event. We'll crown our new champion. The shot before was interesting. We were looking at Jim and Ross Stone, owners of Stone Brothers Racing Team, and in the middle was Ken Douglas, their data acquisition engineer. And uh, Ken's done some driving himself in years gone by. And uh, was involved with Motec prior to being with the Stone Brothers in uh, intimate knowledge and understanding of uh, how to look at, interpret, measure and decipher motor racing data and it's obviously been put to very good use this year. David Bernard is uh, flapping in the wind. Car number seven with Bright behind him. Bright is Amazing, second plenty of time to be patient. in the corrected order. Those uh, green boxes up there indicate that over the last four laps, comparatively speaking, Jason Bright has been quicker than Marcus Ambrose in each and every one of them. Well done, mate. He's had a good weekend, Jason Bright. What has been a pretty weird year for him. Of course, moved to Team Brock. New teammate, brand new team. Had their troubles all caught up in the no testing dramas. He held the lead in the championship for seven rounds up until Queensland. And he lost it at Oran Park and since then Marcus Ambrose hasn't looked back. He's had to look over his shoulder a few times but he hasn't looked back. Todd Kelly in third position. Todd has had a pretty effective year for his first year at HRT since moving from Kmart. He's fifth, ninth in the championship now. He finished fifth last year. But he collected his first pole. Also got a win and he's been on the podium three times. And here is just the honest toiler, isn't he? Stephen Richards fourth. Ingle behind him in fifth. Nobody wants to say anything or do anything. You can kind of feel the crowd sitting out in the grand grandstand. They it's willing, especially the Ford fans, obviously willing Marcus Ambrose home for the next five laps, keeping it clean. Strange day for tension. Top 33 shootout. Conditions were changing all the time. Really didn't know what was going to happen. And then, as soon as we got the word go on this thing, everything happened. Three podiums for Stephen Richards for 2003. Adelaide, Winton, and WA. Other possibility that's uh, coming into the equation here at the moment, Matthew. Five laps to go, Richard. Five laps to go. When you get a chance, mate, switch to reserve at any time, mate. Is that um, this is potentially, and we've still got the other half to come, this is potentially going to be the worst round for Murphy in the championship so far. His previous worst was Winton. <laughs> Not surprisingly, where he ended up with 114 points, which is his drop at the moment. But uh, if he languished tomorrow in the same sort of position he is, then this will become his worst round, which further impacts this um, points. So what exactly does that mean, Neil? How many points will he have at the end of Sunday, <laughs> Billy? I'll just take you out the back and belt you for that question. <laughs> You've got to get over the 33 calculators that we've got on the floor here at the moment, trying to work it all out. It was, uh, earlier there, that was, uh, we saw a shot of Angela Richards, Stephen's wife, so much support for these guys and the ever-expanding V8 supercar family. Us Lingle, a new dad, of course. William, now that you've asked that question, oh, no. <laughs> if you add his drop points from winter of 114 to his current adjusted total, which is 1983, you then need to subtract what might happen today and tomorrow to know where you're at. I'll tell you what just happened. Hang on a second. Russell Lingle just got fourth position as uh, Richo went wide. The enforcer shot through. Those numbers were starting to do my head in. I had to get back to racing. So Russell Ingle gets one position closer to the podium. But Todd Kelly, who's third, 
way down. In fact, he's right down the other end of the main straight. So Russell is on the move. This is what happened. Yeah, Richo with the rears just locked up at the critical point right at the very end of the stop because the rear tyres would be pretty second-hand at this stage of the race. And uh, it's just been enough for a position change. Stone Brothers racing. There won't be any champagne out down there until tomorrow. Yeah, the problem with this business is until it's done, it isn't done. Isn't done. So you just have to wait and make sure that you can really complete the task. We talked about it when we were watching the shootout earlier today. Just the process, Neil, of processing what you've got to do, removing the emotion and the scenarios and getting down to exactly what you need to do to stay in the race, to win the race, get yourself out of positions. Craig Lowndes and Max Wilson having a dog fight and here's Paul Wheel. A bit of lawn mowing out there at turn one. The way they are at the moment, and this is in the adjusted point score. Um, He's assuming, still going. Yeah, sorry, I'm on a theme here. I'm on a roll. Um, this, this is assuming dropping the rounds that have been dropped previously. Um, Murphy's going to end up with 1,896 points in the current position, and scafie has got 1,898. So Scafie theoretically, at the end of this race, is actually second in the championship until such time as we take into account the drop round again. Does everybody follow? Three, 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 three laps to go, mate. Three laps to go. Great effort from Mark Scape, no question about it. This is his track. He dominated here for four years straight before Marcus Ambrose broke the streak earlier this year. He's had five overall victories here at Eastern Creek and now four pole positions in his career. Rusty, what do you got? Somebody take that abacus away from Neil Crompton fast. <laughs> it's blowing my mind. Now listen, I've just had a word to uh, the Castrol team. They tell me that Stephen Richards had to pit very, very early in the window and that has a consequence what's costing him right now. It is just tyres, the team say. It's just tyres. Richo leapfrogged some people in the course of doing that early, uh, that early pit stop, but he's paying the penalty right now. You just can't, um, you don't get the same braking performance out of the car when obviously you've got less rear grip available and it was just, but it was only really right very late in that stop and Stephen was driving the thing at the maximum and there was nothing more left and that's why it just got crossed up at the wrong moment. That's why there was the position change and Russell slipped through on board with Mark who is chasing CL at the moment. He's just up there in the distance. It's been a great save. He's actually kept the game alive that comeback today as you pointed out Matty it's one of the drives of the day for sure last apart from this fellow here perhaps last time round for Marcus 36-7 compares with his fastest lap of a 34-1 and that's typical of what happens here by the time they get to the end of the race it can often be as, you know, pretty close to three seconds total drop off in pace Grant yeah, just spare a thought uh, once again for Greg Murphy coming in here with a real chance and at least an opportunity to uh, take the championship. And obviously now that's gone right out the window. I've uh, just been able to talk to his dad and uh, said, you know, what what is it? What's going through his mind at the moment? He's been unusually quiet on the radio and uh, said, could he be a little bit angry? And he said, I think those words would pretty much sum it up. And I guess, uh, Neil, you've been out there and, and, and raced these things. The frustration that he must now be experiencing, the car is clearly not performing as he needs it to be uh, competitive. What's it like in the frame of mind that he'd be in to try and flog a dead horse to get some results? Well, initially you probably end up being angry in a situation like this, but then eventually it, Grant will give way to the fact that um, what is, is, you know, and uh, someone's actually losing some oil there at the moment, heading down the main straight. And so you eventually just accept it and say, that's my lot this year. And that's probably ultimately where Greg will settle to. It's Anthony Tratt that's got the oil smoke appearing from the back of that car. Right, right, right. Right, 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 so he's getting a puncture there and Ambrose rounds him up. So, But he'd be frustrated. He would have been frustrated yesterday too because it didn't have the pace in the car and uh, you know, it looms in your mind for a while. But uh, at the end of the day, he um, has made it worse for himself. He was involved in an incident, and uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, but really, given that uh, Marcus made a great start 
got straight up into the teeth of it, and then Scafie took his stop. You know, Greg would have known at that point he would have been informed by Rob. OK, this is not good news. But I think the, the upside for Murphy is he could take away the fact that in the latter part of this championship, when he thought that he was clean bowled in the middle of the year, um, he's come back on hot and strong and been a real factor, and he can build on that going into next season. He's got good momentum. You know, his stock is high. He's strongly valued in the championship, so he's going to be around for a long time to come. They love him in New Zealand, obviously. Uh, he's done an awesome job over there a couple of weeks ago. But it looks as though it's heading in this man's direction, doesn't it? Going straight towards him. 27-year-old Tasmanian-born, now Gold Coast resident. Around turn 12. Mission almost accomplished for Marcus Ambrose. There's still 250 well done, minutes to go. Good, we need it. But it's Let's as it good as done. Line. Marcus Ambrose takes out race one at Eastern Creek. And Stone Brothers Racing. And Ford now know it. That the celebrations may be on hold, but the championship looks as though it's secure for 2003 for Marcus Ambrose. Jason Bright finished second and Todd Kelly has finished third but these guys are still scrapping for Lowndes and Wilson Max Wilson crosses in sixth position great comeback mate really good stuff mate 48 points on Murph well done pal and special applause for that man right there Mark Scaife that's a comeback of gigantic proportions up to eighth 75 points in the bank, but Marcus gets 96. That will put Mark Scaife up to second on the championship ladder now. We've still got to drop the worst round, and look at the blue flags hanging over pit lane there because we're witnessing a changing of the guard, no question. Five round victories. Another race win for Marcus Ambrose. He led the attack from the word go and when Scape got into trouble with the officials, Ambrose said goodbye to the rest. Jason Bright gets up to second, Kelly there third. Russell Ingle muscled his way from 18th up to fourth. Stephen Richards fifth, Wilson Lowndes, their escape in eighth position. Paul Morris and Jason Varguana close out the top ten. Cameron McConville was under siege for that tenth position and he eventually relinquished it to finish in eleventh. JB, Paul Radisic, win cup, good performance from him. Jason Richards and Dean Canto take us down to sixteen. Bradley Jones in seventeenth. Brian Glenn Seaton went backwards. Mark Larkin, 20th position. Then Stephen Johnson, Paul Dumbrell, Garth Tander, Greg Murphy in 24th position. But right now, the focus is on the Ford man, the Pertec BA Falcon, back after this at Eastern Creek. 